Ta-da! Thank you, everybody, for coming from all over. We're going to talk about making something that many people think is simple, but it is part of a, a lot of different cultures, and there is a lot of different ways to make it. But Lulu's stepping forward and sharing. This is this is a family recipe, but is it a secret family recipe, or yeah. it's just been passed down for many, many, many years? It's been around for many years, and uh, I got it from my mother-in-law, and she got it from her mother-in-law with fine tuning from her father-in-law. So it's kind of a, it's an old family recipe that was brought over from Germany, uh, probably in the early 1900s or the teens or 20s. And uh, so my mother-in-law's mother-in-law came to the United States and she was sponsored by um, Lambert of the St. Louis airport fame. And she came over along with her best friend and they were like housekeepers and maids and cleaning ladies for whoever they were working for in relationship to the sponsorship. And so she brought this recipe with her and it's potato pancakes. And I'm gonna make it exactly as, as she taught it to me and how I have been making it for 30 years. <laughs> and I mean, just based on the ingredients, it's a lot simpler than how I grew up making it. Yeah. Like you, don't have, you don't have eggs in yours. Oh, you I do. To, it sh um, eggs, should be, eggs should be on the list. In fact, oh. if you haven't taken your egg out, they, it, it should be warming up to room temperature. Um, so I'm gonna pull mine out because I haven't done that yet. Let me find the um, list here. Well, I was taking everything out and thinking, hey, I have everything. And um, I didn't notice that on the list. Let's see. Yeah. So I've got on the list. So hi, this is Jay. No eggs on I'm the list. Just wondering. <laughs> We've got two I'm, cups I'm grated wondering. potatoes and does you you said uh large rosette potatoes does it really matter what kind of potato no um i've always used russet potatoes um i've tried it with others i am peeling the skins off of mine because i've tried it both ways and i do not care for the skin on it my mother-in-law had me take the skins off when we initially made it Okay, so, I'll try that, but I grew up that we never, ever, ever didn't eat the skins. And this is a recipe you can do and you can change it. Um, like I said, I'm going to just be showing you how she taught me. Um, if you have a food processor, I highly recommend it. I killed mine. So I've been doing it by hand ever since because I haven't replaced my food processor as of yet. Um, because while we are grating and peeling and grating the potatoes, if those who have a food processor um, would have time to even clean it, because it's that quick with the food processor, um, it makes fast work and it saves you a lot of muscle and arm work. So, yeah, like I said, in the recipe I got, there was no eggs. I apologize um, for that. You do need one egg. Um, my mother-in-law, her name was Ruby, said no matter how many potatoes you use, she only used one egg, no matter what. So the, I'm, like I said, I'm just, I'm just sharing with you um, how she instructed me to do it. And, um, and we've how, always... how do you feel like these differentiate between like um, hash browns or um, latkes? They're similar to a latka. Um, in fact, there's probably not much difference though. I did some research on all sorts of things when I figured I was gonna be doing this class. And it turns out that a lot of people take the liquid off of the potato um, because they give off a lot of water. My mother-in-law never had me do that. And so it would get kind of runny. And um, yeah, we always actually put either 
you can get potato flour or, you know, the mashed potato powder. And we would add that to it when we didn't have eggs. So like when you're camping, um, you know, we would, we, we would make like a, basically a, a fried pancake just with mashed potato powder and or regular potatoes. Mm -hmm. So, so let's see, let me pull up. I, the think, I think these here. taste, these taste better. So basically everybody just scrub a peel and wash your potatoes. Um, the, uh, another good potato for this is Yukon gold. I've used little small red potatoes. Um, I have not met a potato I don't like, <laughs> so. But I'm a, I'm a good old Irish gal here. So um, my mother would oftentimes, my mother now, would just boil a potato, quarter them, and, you know, just serve them. Not mash, not anything, just boiled potatoes. So that's what I grew up eating. And then when I got this recipe, um, it was exciting. Well, you said it doesn't matter what egg, but look, here's one egg and here's another use, use the large egg <laughs> just like so this right here is from the store and this is from my uh what do you call it my uh nephew's chickens so like the big wow. one I would definitely... when he first got it i was like is that a duck egg he's like no it's just a chicken egg wow so. oh yeah so there's my so egg cleaning up my all right so let me get i'm already behind i need to keep up with you so i in my experimenting i used to do like four or five eggs and sometimes it turns out to be a lot and i would spend all my time cooking um i would suggest at this time if you have an electrics uh, um, electric range to go ahead and if you're doing cast iron I'm already starting to warm up my pan because it takes it a good 15 minutes for it to get up to temperature I'm not putting okay. any oil or anything in it yet I'm just warming the pan up I just I need to do it for that long because a key to making these very deliciously is that the oil is hot enough when you first put the potato pan, uh, the batter in. Um, I think I'm gonna try to, one batch with the skins and one batch without. I, I, I just, it's against my very, very core of being to not, but I guess I can use the skins and make just, what is it? Um, fried potato skins or something else, I guess, huh? Well, if you know, this recipe is flexible for those who, you know, like you or want to use every part of the um, potato. Like I said, I tried it. I personally didn't care for the flavor of it. And I'm all about the taste. Um, so I'm going to start grating my... Um, well, especially I can't find my potato peeler, so I'm having to do it with my knife. But I do recommend scrubbing your skin of your potatoes really, really well. Yeah, I do that. Wash them and scrub them well. I have this great device here that I can, it's got all these different attachments. So I can do all kinds of different potatoes. And so it's just, if I have to do a lot of it, that's what I use. But since we're only doing a couple potatoes, I think. Here we can put this. I just got the old fashioned pan grater here, right? Oh, you got to hear me. I had to take you with me because this is I my. I can't find my potato peeler anywhere. I don't know what happened to it. All I'm right. Well, don't, don't worry about it. Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to try and follow. I'm. Feeling it with my knife. Okay, two things. Um, so, uh, uh, what you just put your your hot frying pan on medium heat? So that was a good question. I have mine on um, four. 
Yeah. Well, you're just warming up the pan now. Yeah, I have it just a little bit higher, but my, I've learned with this electric and my huge cast iron, I should show you it so you can see. Um, it's a it's a really large pan and it, the burner is not quite as big as the pan. And when it gets hot, I won't be able to touch the handle. So I, I'm shooting to have this thing really, really warm before I introduce any oil. And yeah, I always so, make the mistake of not heating my pan enough before I start frying stuff. So I have um, low to high, two to 10, and I have it on five. But that's um, just to warm it up. Are you going to fry in that temperature or are you going to turn it way up? Um, that's just to warm my pan up. Um, it's been. Since I was practicing and doing other people's recipes before I started, um, before I started uh, preparing for this, I I practiced with different temperatures, and I have found that I wasn't always doing the oil hot enough. And I'll show you a little technique that I do. You might have seen others do it with the um, end of a um, wooden spoon. But I, I feel just, really ridiculous as a, a chef here peeling my potatoes with the knife because I can't find my peeler. This you is... can just scrub them real well. I wanted to show you the grater I'm using. I prefer the finest. Oh yeah, okay. this like that's what I have. It's a and twin. What, what's the oh see, but yours is a little different because your finer one is on the one end. Mine, mine goes more vertical, so. I just treated my I, potatoes on the larger one. <laughs> so also I, one thing it. good about a box grater, and a box grater, you got the mm -hmm. full, full thing up on each side of different sizes. My box grater doesn't have the super fine. Oh, so. okay. And I prefer the super fine. I've read many recipes that say do it with the coarse. When I get to the onion, I'll end up doing it with the coarse. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use my big device. This is what I do when I cook a a, a lot. Hey, so if hey I'm or. doing the super fine, I'm gonna use this thing. Hey or yep. Christy's in the waiting room. Oh. So how do you keep from uh, from hurting your knuckles when you get down to the end of your potato on the shredder? I put that piece on a cutting board and chop, 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 chop. I don't. And I also do it really long for a long time um, because I'm just using one half of my grater. And it's just, I don't know which is better for you to see. Uh, maybe the onion is now, we run the onion through the grater too, right? Yeah, but do that last because it, it really gums up your grater. Like I said, I switch over to the course for the onion. I love this device, but it's a pain to clean if you're only doing a couple of potatoes. But. Yeah, but this is the kind of thing where I think a food processor is well worth it because in the amount of time it's going to take us to grate, you know, three or four. Well, I have a hand food processor. That's what this guy is. This is, I mean, I tend to not like electric stuff too much because they wear out. I wore mine out. I killed the motor, but I used it for years. And it was from my mother-in-law. It was a cousin art. It was so cute. That's seriously wearing it out because usually the motor doesn't go out. It's everything else. <laughs> I had it for a very long time and I made a lot of pan data pancakes on it. All right. So that's that right there is um, 
four four okay. potatoes and then this yeah. is the bits that didn't go through the grater very well sure. so i guess i'll chop that on the with the knife my potatoes are already going brown should i put them in water or just forget about it <laughs> Um, you could do a couple of things. One, cover them with plastic so they don't get any air on them. Okay. That it, They're oxidizing. It, it won't really affect the flavor much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, when I was practicing this recipe, I turned, I did um, just two potatoes with the one egg. And that turned out to be perfect for, for just me alone. I'm making a little bit more tonight because I'm sharing it with my family. Um, in preparing for the um, cooking class tonight, I did some reading about potatoes. And it was really fascinating how long potatoes have been around. Um, as a cultivated vegetable. It started in Peru and they discovered evidence of not actually the potato, but on pottery as early as uh, 10,000 BCE, which I thought was really a long, amazingly long time ago. Um, and I they, heard that Peru has like 2000 varieties of potatoes now. Right. An interesting thing about the variety of potatoes, one of the pro problems that they had at the, in the 1800s when the potato famine not only happened in, in Ireland, but all across Europe, is that they had just one variety that became very susceptible to um, the disease that it caught. So um, that was an interesting read as well. And Peru has way more um, different varieties. What they did that was very fascinating is they learned how to freeze dry the potatoes. Oh. And yeah, what they would do is because they were at high elevation during the day, at night they'd let, they dig them up and they were smaller. They let them freeze at night and they put them in the sun during the day. And they did that night after night and they would slowly freeze dry and they ended up smashing them down and releasing more and more of the water from them till literally they were freeze dry. And they wow. would remove, they, in the process, they would remove the skin. And this was one of the food substances that the Inca army used because it was so lightweight and nutritious. And the reason why that the potato took a strong hold in Europe was because it had three to four times as many calories per acre than any other food crop, such as the rye or the buckwheat or barley or any of the other grains that they might've been using at the time. It could uh, also survive cold weather where the wheat crops would freeze and the potatoes and also, would. Also, once harvested, it has a really long shelf life, and it was very inexpensive to grow. So, um, and it came it came to Europe via the Canary Islands. Wow. Yeah, it, 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 I don't know how long it, it, the potato spent in the Canary Islands, but. So I'm actually going ahead and making some applesauce too. I oh, thought. I. I made applesauce. Um, what I thought, <laughs> how'd you make yours? I'm just chopping some apples. I'm going to put a little sherry wine in there and some brown sugar and just let it cook. It was like aisle 12 in, in, in schnooks. Well, that's how you made it? Oh, okay. Yeah. That works. <laughs> I probably have some applesauce around, but I, I have some fresh apples, so. I'm putting. Where's the brown sugar? There it is. Um, how do I uh, do the onions? Just as fine as possible. So, what I would do, if you guys are ready to do the onions, let me take you over here.
I got the onions halved and peeled, but I haven't started cutting them. So I recommend not having them personally because. And what happens well, when just, I get ahead of time? Yeah, I was, I was trying not to get ahead of you guys. I leave the um, I leave the root side on and I trim it a little bit. I take the skin off, which takes a little longer than having it. But it's worth it to have the, the onions stay together, at least in my opinion. Um, the skin takes a little more energy to get off when you leave it whole. But when it comes to grating, it's so much easier. All right. So you just did you take the two tips off? No, don't take the root end off. You can trim it up a little bit, but do not take the root end. Because that gives you something to keep all the onion together. Okay, so you just cut off the top part then. Yeah, and I just trimmed the bottom just a little bit. And I have right. found with the hand grater that there's a technique. Are we ready to have my hand grater? See, my, my potatoes are oxidizing. Let me show you. See how they're changing color? Yeah. Mine too. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, they're exposed to so much air when they're grated. Yeah. All right. So my apples, I got apple, sherry, and brown sugar. Slow cook in there. All right. Okay. So I'm trying to peel the onion off like you said. It is a lot harder to do. And you may want to take like the first layer off. It you sacrifice a little onion, but you could put that on your cutting board to chop. Now, when I do it, I'm holding the the root end. I'm going moving on to the the bigger side, and I'm going at an angle right in with my potatoes, and I keep turning it so it's. I don't know if you can see how I'm doing it. All right. I keep, I keep turning it. And I use, I use quite a bit of onion. I really like the onion flavor in my potato pancakes. You're using the very small one for that too, yeah? No, no, no use the bigger one. Okay. And so when I get to the towards the end, I'm I'm going now. At first I was going this way, but now I'll start grating down. So I'm not I'm not feathering these. So I'll turn it now. Oh yeah, this is a lot easier. Yeah, definitely leave that root on there. Oops, I got a little bit of so so once you get past halfway, start going down on the does that make sense, everybody? Yeah, turn it sideways and do the edge. Yeah, just try not to grate. Try not to Maybe. grate your fingers, is that what you said? No, you don't want to grate your fingers. But, but I thought that was the secret ingredient is a little bit of blood. It won't be vegan then. Only if you're a cannibal. <laughs> This is, my onions are really wet onions. Mine is too. I think how dry it looks on the outside, it wouldn't be very wet on the inside, but it's definitely really wet. So th at this point, my onion was so big, this is probably 25% onion. Oh, that's going to be delicious. Now, once again, you're going to figure out what you like in yours. See see how um, it gets all gummed up in your grater? The Man, potatoes are... that onion disappeared. Look at that. There's barely any left. Perfect. Just a all little right. bit of the, the root. <laughs> Potatoes and onions. And this is where 
So um, we can we can mix the potatoes and onions and put them together. Yeah. Yeah, I just grated mine right in the same bowl. Try yeah, that. This is so hard to do. <laughs> what? I'm just crying. I was teasing. Yeah, my mine's starting to oxidize. Um, it isn't sure. Yeah. So now you want to add your egg. And this is where when I was growing up camping or making a vegan, we just added powdered mashed potatoes. So basically potato flour. It doesn't bind it as well as an egg does, but I wonder what else you could use. Tapioca flour would really bind it. Now some recipes will have you put another egg in. Um, but because I don't drain my, my potatoes of their moisture, it really doesn't need it. And I'm not, some of the recipes call for rinsing their potatoes, but I've discovered I kind of like the creaminess of the starch from the potatoes. Yeah. I can't yeah. seem to find the recipe for the proportions. Did you use like two big potatoes and one medium onion and one I egg? Actually, I actually probably use equivalent of three big potatoes. Mm. Um, well, but it's kind of a, a thing where you really can't make it wrong. Uh, um, so, yeah, I mean, I had, I used two like, I guess regular potatoes and then two of the, the red ones, those are rosettes. And then so, um, one, I basically am double in the recipe. So you may wanna go ahead and use another egg, but since I'm not, so a lot of recipes have you squeeze the moisture out of the potato. But as you can see, look at all this moisture. Yep. And you wanna put the moisture from the onions. There seems to be a lot of onion juice here. <laughs> And see, I don't want to get rid of that. I, okay. I, I like that, but like well, I said. A, does a real hot pan compensate for that? Yeah, you really want a hot pan. Now, you're heat, now let me, let's check my pan. Because a real hot pan will drive off that moisture. So this is, I can hardly touch this. So I'm going to leave it this high. When we get the rest of the... Um, the salt and the pepper in it. Oh, they're the cat. We have cat activity. We have a feral cat that's playing with squiggles. Um, so now we're going to add the salt and pepper. Lulu, your apron is absolutely adorable. Thank that's you. Cute. Thank you. It comes in handy, but you can't. There's a problem with wearing an apron that you forget you're not wearing it and you go and wipe your hands on your clothes and then you're in trouble. Okay, so my recipe, that, my recipe said, says flour as well. Yeah. So, so yeah, mine probably there? has a good quarter cup of water in the bottom there. If you I know, I know. So this is where you, you're going to add the flour. I keep mine in a jar and I just kind of sprinkle it over the top and then I'll stir it. Yeah, that'll absorb the water, I think. Well, I'm, I'm gluten free, so I'm using a little rice flour, but if I had okay. potato flour, that'd be perfect for this. Actually, so, if I was smart, I would have pulled out some powdered mashed potatoes, yeah. So here I still have a little too much moisture. I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. And I'm still gonna add a little bit more. Actually, like I have some Indian flour. It's like uh, lentil flour. That would have been good to add some protein to it. So, um, 
some of my research I did was about latkes in general. And uh, some of the original latkes were made with cheese way back. Um, they didn't call it a latke, but in the, in the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, when Judith uh, killed that Assyrian general, um, she got him drunk on wine and fed him latkes, supposedly. And latkes are in celebration of Hanukkah, which is a celebration of a candle that, or the amount of oil that was enough to light one candle. In fact, yeah, I mean, ha Hanukkah is basically you use, you fry anything in oil because you're celebrating the oil, right? Burning for a long time. Exactly. And um, Did you say exactly? I said exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, the uh, potato. I became... keep adding more flour and it's still not absorbing it. I guess I just had a lot of water. Right. Yeah, it's not it? fully, it's still wet. Can you see mine? Yeah, it is a pancake after all. Okay, now here's, here's the trick. Now is the time you want to add the salt, but I have learned you, you want to add the salt before, not, if I add it now, it's going to get too wet. So what I do. Yeah, because the salt pulls the moisture out of the potato. It, it will, right. and that, that's not good. I'm using canola oil. And I'm using quite Just a bit. Just keep adding more and more flour. Mine's so wet. I probably well, got it. It's okay if it's a little wet. But you made quite a bit. Now you see That's how much true. oil? I have probably a quarter inch of oil. Okay, you want That's That's one of the things I learned over time. It um basically over put I put a lot more oil than you think. Preheat the pan, make the pan really hot, and then make the oil really hot. So I'm I end up adding oil because I make a huge batch. I end up adding oil as I go along. I do too. Okay, so see now my potatoes are still giving up water, but I'm not going to worry about it. I use two forks. I'm going to turn my oven on um, about 275 because as I make these, I'm going to put them in the oven because we're going to eat together. So you put pepper in it, but you didn't put salt, you said. Not yet, because it's going to start giving up so much salt. So what I kind of do is I do it in batches. So I take my salt and I put it over in one little spot. But I use quite a bit of salt. Now, can't you just put the salt after you cook it? It doesn't taste the same. As much as people like to add salt afterwards, it's nice to cook with it or have it cooked in. I can make one giant potato pancake and make this go quicker, but I like littler ones. So now I'm taking, I just did one little section here with the salt and my, let me show you how I test my oil. I have a, when I stick this in, it should fry. See how it's starting to fry? What are you sticking in? It's what the end spoon? of my the wooden spoon. spoon. Oh. Now that only works a couple of times. Like if, if you keep using the same wooden spoon. I'm going to let this get a little bit warmer. I raised it up to about between six and seven. So it mine's pretty high, but I have quite a bit of oil. And do not get any moisture in the pan just yet because it'll splatter. But I want this oil as hot as possible. You should look at this. <laughs> See my moisture that's starting to happen from the one area where I put yeah. the sugar, or put the salt. Yeah, the salt will bring out the moisture. No problem. I have no problem with that. Okay, so here we go. I take a pile of it and I put it in. And then I take my fork and I separate it out. 
relatively thin. I'm adding a little more salt to one corner and I'm making another one. Now you want to kind of spread them out so they're a little lacy. My father-in-law oh. lived with my mother-in-law after his wife had passed away. And um, he kept saying, oh, let me make the potato pancakes. And Ruby kept insisting, no, 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 I'll make them. And he said, I don't like how you make them. You make them too thick. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, when you when you make them thick, they take a long time to cook too, right? I mean, and they're not as crispy. So with mine, because the heat is so much more in the center, I loosen it up a little bit, and then I'll take my potato pancake and flip it around. Did you see how I did that? Yep. Because I want it to be even before I flip it over. And I actually have room for one more. And this is where you got to kind of keep track of when you put stuff in. And this is where it's hard. When I first started making this, I never ate sitting down. You never did what? I never ate these sitting down because I would, I'd be cooking the next batch while I'm cooking the first. Oh yeah. Well, you need, you need to have the energy to make the next one, right? <laughs> but like I said, I've learned to use a, um, a heated uh, oven to keep them, to hold them in. Do they get plates and paper towels ready? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. You guys should get paper towels and some a plate ready. That should have been done before you started. If, if you're by yourself, for sure. So let me show you this. Around the edge, it's all crispy. And then you flip it over. Wow. Nice. So uh, I use an electric skillet and do four at a time, but I end up using a spatula and I'm going to try the fork method to make it even thinner. I, I think that's fun. Now, the problem with making them thinner is you end up with a lot more potato pancakes and so you're standing there cooking for a long time. But they are yummier. But thinner. they do taste better. <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever, like when we did a, a, like tons of them, we put them basically on a baking sheet in the oven. That's, I got the oven on and I have that. No, I meant to like cook them. Oh, well that would be a thought. I mean, they wouldn't, they wouldn't come out as phenomenal, but you could cook lots of them quickly. How much paper, we need more than this. Yeah. So, so I keep, I keep turning these because so much of my heat is in the very center of my pan. And that's just a matter of knowing, you know, your, your cooking. Okay, so you can get out your sour cream or butter. Oh, I meant to get butter out already. Wait, did you say you serve them with butter? Oh yeah. I Wait do. a second, they were just fried. Why do we need more? <laughs> okay. The flavor. So I said at the time when I was doing this, that this is not a healthy dish. <laughs> um, but they do taste delicious. So is that peanut or canola oil? Um, I am using um, canola oil. My favorite is peanut oil, but I haven't gotten that in a little while. I meant to take my butter out earlier. You can also use sour cream. Now in these latkes, you can use zucchini, you can use sweet potato, you can use, oh, any kind of legume in it. I mean, it's it's not a strict thing that it's just potato. What about um, cheese? Oh, and cheese is really popular. Well, and what's the other one is eat it with applesauce. That is a Northern European specialty. What is that? There's my this applesauce apple, is cooking this, away there where it's all it is is brown sugar and a little <laughs> sherry wine. Yeah, applesauce made of from apples without any sugar added, you know. Let's see. That's good, is it? 
So you're having some applesauce. Good. Yeah, I got. I just bought a jar of applesauce, so I'm kind of cheating. I, I made some uh, yogurt with my mom last week. I still need to put it up on the little video on the YouTube channel, but I got some fresh yogurt. Basically, anytime we have like a, some milk left over, we either make some fresh cheese or fresh yogurt. So oh, my, first, flipped, my first ones are done. I flipped it too early. And I'm going to go ahead and put them in. I have my oven heating. And I'm just going to stick them in here to keep until, because there's three of us. So. so I like how we always put them on paper towels to soak up some of the oil, but then we serve them with butter. <laughs> Butter tastes better than oil. <laughs> Just like, hey, what's happening? <laughs> so, yeah, the moisture just keeps coming out of the potatoes. I keep mixing it back in. Well, that's why you want to add the salt as you go. Because it really gets moisture. Now, like I said, a lot of people drain this moisture off. I think it adds creaminess. Your potatoes are not quite the same in the beginning as they are like at the end because it does get creamier. And you really want to thin them out and make them kind of lacy. I told Lulu this, um, but last Monica, I actually made so much that I, for the first time, froze some latkes, and it was fine when I got them out. And I just I heated them up in the toaster oven so they were crispy. Yeah, a toaster oven would be handy. I wonder. I've ne I've I don't own an air fryer, but everybody's bragging about them. I wonder how well it would do in an air fryer. An air fryer is just a convection oven, so it would be the same as when you bake them. Okay. So not as good. <laughs> but you, I, I wonder if you could just do them quicker. I don't know. All right. I got a little more space there now. My experience is that air fryers and convection ovens only shorten the cook time by 15 minutes of the regular baking. I, tr I started doing mine at half temperature and I keep turning up the temperature on mine. I think, uh, I, I I think right mine now. is, mine is, I don't know, it just tends to have a low temperature on frying. Well, as you put cool things into the pan, it will cool the pan down. That was one thing, probably a good practice I forgot to mention is any of the stuff that you do have, if you have any of these vegetables in your fridge or your egg in the fridge, you want to take them out to like let them warm up a little bit. Don't you agree? I agree. So. Cause it does, it does impact how um, hot your pan stays. Do you have any finished or? Nope. I keep turning up the temperature. Um, now I've got it pretty much all the way turned up. I have a gas stove, but, and I have a, I, I think I have a, a bit more oil than you do. Yeah, my oil slowly a lot more. You have a lot more oil, or yeah, I'm de basically deep frying them. But it's so hard not eating the ones that we have uh, that I have finished already. Oops. Say hi, Squiggles. <laughs> 
That's my dad. Hey. <laughs> she's she's car friendly, so they bring her down every time they come over for a visit. Now I'm going to turn my oil down just a little bit. It's on. I'm going to have to watch mine. I turned it all the way up, and I think it's probably going to get too hot eventually here. But that's the hardest part, I think. In I used to absolutely hate making these because we'd have to make enough for the whole family. And it was just like right about when you were done making all of them, you figured out exactly the right temperature and the exact right amount of oil. So the secret is really starting out with extreme and hot oil. That's why I said show it with the, uh, you can use your uh, wooden spoon to test it. And I, as, so, as I, so as I, I instead of um, using, when I fry stuff, instead of using paper towels, if you look, I've got aluminum pan and I just tilt it. And so I just put the stuff on the top and it drains down to the bottom of the pan. Oh, that's good. Um, I mean, I always used to use the paper towels and then, I don't know, I just thought of this method. And so that's what I've been I doing. I actually save all my oil soaked paper towels to make fire starters out of them. That's a good idea. I mean, I really hate to waste them. I feel bad about it. <laughs> so because this is giving up so much um, moisture, you want to keep making them thin, but they do end up getting creamier and creamier. And in fact, the first batch, they eat, they start tasting different as each batch goes along. So look in here how much moisture I have. And that's why I add the um, salt as I go. So I'll take the next batch here and I'll go ahead and I'll salt it. That might've been a little too much. So I grew up deep frying them and you're, you know, I have a lot more oil than you. You're actually just doing it as if you're making pancakes. Well, it's more oil than, it's a lot more oil than I'd ever use on a pancake because for pancakes, I just kind of have a film of oil. Th these are in oil cooking for sure. Well, you are looking more like the original as a matter of a pan. I think you have a cast iron pan, cooks better than what uh, Ola does. Yeah, it holds a lot of heat more evenly. Yeah. But did you put flour in it or flour and eggs or what? I did, yeah, yeah. It, ha it has flour and eggs. Now at this point, I probably will end up adding a little more flour. Yeah, that's what I usually do. Yeah. But like All right, said, I'm already eating my first batch. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to eat at what you have. A place for people who are uh, sitting and as you cook them outside, preferably because it stinks, uh, you feed them. Well, mine is still hot, so I'm going to actually put a little of the fresh made yogurt on top of it. Balance that heat. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I you like know that I what? Put a lot of onions. You know what? You're supposed between each pancake, you both have a spoonful of uh, alcohol in between. You can do Jägermeister, or you can do usually of a spoon. We have it on gin from a tin spoon. You know that kind of custom? No. no? Sounds good. Yeah. That's what what is a typical thing? What you do with Pfannkuchen? <laughs> No, like I have not. Last, uh, have pancake, you could have a grease fire if you're plastered. <laughs> <laughs> Just like uh, that's why you know somebody cooks and somebody eats, you know, and you the spoon for that is a big tradition with it in between because you need it for the fat to metabolize, right? There you go. Yeah, mine is get, getting really like a lot of water's coming out of it. It's, even though I haven't really put salt in it. And so I keep mixing it. But the thing is, is even if the moisture comes out, 
you can have that last pancake just literally be the potato liquid yeah. pancake with not much or texture. Just, just start scooping just potato and leave the liquid behind. Yeah, what kind of potatoes did you use? I used russet. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're looking so good. Yeah, we need fresh. Can we get more pork house? I think you spent a little more time making it nice and circular. It really, I like the two fork method that my mother in law taught me. It really, and it does leave a certain amount of. Um, of moisture behind that you, if you don't want it. I kind of make them the shape of the pan. So why don't you just make one big round one? And when I started, I said I could, but I, I like them in the shape. I see, I'm not a big eater, so. I like being able to go back for more, so making them smaller. Now, what I do with the leftovers, a lot of times I'll cook them up with eggs in the morning, just warm them up in a pan. And you can see how the uh, moistures or the oils going away. It's not near as much as there was. I have a very uneven stove. It's got its own personality. Oh, what kind of potatoes did you use? I use like the regular, um, I don't know what they're called. Let me find the bag here real quick. So like the, what are they called? This is grown in Idaho, Idaho potato. <laughs> Turkey, you Probably a russet. A good one. Um, just like the one that's kind of brown. And then I got um, some of the red ones. So I did half and half, so. Yeah, the white ones and the red ones are good for that. Uh, okay. The other ones are absorbing too much uh, uh, well, the, the, oil with the Idaho potatoes. So when you do it with the other ones, that's a uh, crispier so the, potato. The, the red ones I had, they were all very small ones. Yeah. And the this is like one of the smallest ones of the other potatoes. So I had a lot of the big, the, mm. you know, them, I had them bigger. So I think I, oops, I think I overfried that batch. So I probably did more potatoes than I needed to. Um, Wait, there's never enough. I know. But I get to the point where I want to sit down, I'm hungry, I want to eat the fruits of my labor, and I still have like half of it to go. So <laughs> This is where being the cook is not as much fun. Well, that's yeah, why I already ate two of them. All right. I think after this batch comes off, I'm going to add more oil and bring it up to temperature because things have kind of slowed down as far as how fast it's cooking. <laughs> I must be making mine thicker than yours or I have a bigger pan because um, I, I thought I made twice as many potatoes as you and I only have enough for one more. I make mine relatively yeah. thin. Mm -hmm. Yours are thicker or? I think they definitely are thicker. Are they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I make them similar to yours, or maybe in between yours and, and Lulu's. Well, 
Yeah, well, that's the training of my mother-in-law's father-in-law was to make them too thick. It was so cute because um, I never got to meet her father-in-law, but um, between my ex-husband and, and her, or she would just tell great stories of them and they were just really, really neat people. And he didn't want to hurt her feelings. He kept saying, I'll make them. And she, you know, didn't want him. You know, she felt it was inappropriate for him to be cooking. And then he finally pressed up that you make them too thick. <laughs> it was so cute. Cool. So what are some ways that you serve them I mean, is there is there anything that you think shouldn't be served with them? Um, I think they would be a great side to any meaty dish if you wanted to use them as a side. Um, you can, you know, serve them with salmon. You know, smoked salmon with capers. You can make a sauce with, let's say, uh, your sour cream or creme fraiche and put you know, dill in it and um, chives, even more capers. Um, it really is, this is where you could do things that add flavors that you really like. Let's say if you wanted to make them with sweet potatoes and, um, you know, onion or garlic, you know, you can change things around. I've never Probably made You can them. put some farmstead cheese, like some fresh made cheese in it. Yeah. Or a dried Parmesan might be tasty in it. This is not something that you guys normally did. Um, we, well, since I learned to make this, there is a really neat recipe I have for zucchini um, crusted pizza. And it's, a, it's from the Moosewood cookbook, one of my favorite all-time cookbooks. And That's it a good is, one. I love that. I, I, you know, like that movie, uh, Julie Julia, I feel like I want to cook through that book every single recipe because I've, I've, I've gotten so many good recipes. But it's a thin layer of uh, shredded zucchini mixed in with two types of cheeses, like a Romano and a Parmesan, with just a little bit of flour in it. And an egg or no? Yeah, and I think it has egg in it. And it doesn't matter what you put on top of this pizza. It is so good. Um, and it's not pizza like you think of pizza. And I've literally... Ate this, ate it leftover, standing in front of the refrigerator the next morning, cold out of the refrigerator. This this pizza crust is so good. All right, we're getting to the end. Can I um answer Orr's question of how it would be served at my house? Yes. Yeah. So I do um as Lulu mentioned, serve it as a side dish, but since it's usually Hanukkah when I make it, because I fry almost nothing, um, a beef brisket would be not unusual. And then I make a dish called simis, and that has sweet potatoes and carrots and various fruits like prunes and apricots, maybe raisins or golden raisins and some cinnamon. And you boil that, you know you, you cook it in a saucepan till it's really starting to kind of break apart and, and come together and um my challah and maybe some sort of green vegetable so that would be like my my hanukkah meal and i'm not jewish but my ex-husband was so i got a lot of these you know cooking experiences then that sounds tasty yeah, we. Did you I feel like we always hala? Did fresh impressed. yogurt or fresh made farmstead yes. cheese. And yes, even though we had the pepper in it, we always put pepper in it. We would make like a fresh applesauce. Um. So here, I, I dropped the last of the potato liquid. 
And that one actually looks like a pancake. See? I couldn't help watching this. I grew up in the restaurant, in the restaurant business, and I it brings back memories. I remember uh, my dad would make hash browns. He would like steam the potatoes with their skins on in a big pot. Of course, they're making a lot. It's a restaurant. And then when they cooled off, you would just take a bread knife and you could just scrape the skins right off because the potatoes were already cooked. And then we grate them. And that way, when you got an order for hash brown potatoes, you throw them on the grill, they were already cooked. And you just had to kind of, you know, brown them on the grill a little bit and heat them up. But that's what this whole thing reminds me of because that was a, a childhood memory I had. <laughs> and look at how this right here, I didn't put any water in it. It was just a little bit of sherry, brown sugar, and four apples. And just look how nice that is. It didn't nice. come out. I haven't reduced it. It's very liquidy. Apples um, have a so lot or, of apple um, sauce. Since I was late joining, could you explain this dish? So that's just applesauce. I just, I cut up four apples in there, um, some brown sugar, and then just a little bit of sherry wine in it. Um, and just, it's been slow cooking for the whole time we've been cooking. Great. And, and to answer somebody's question, yes, I do bake my own challah. Wow. So. I'm impressed by anything with yeast. I, uh, during this pandemic, I've made bread once. Uh, well, it turned out pretty well. <laughs> but I watched, a, I'm doing these virtual tours with heygo.com. And one favorite. lady in Calgary, Alberta, she showed everybody how to make kala. And uh, I still was too intimidated to try it. <laughs> Well, it was, um, even though I grew up with my Italian grandma making Italian bread all the time, she used uh, baker's yeast. And so it was not the granulated kind mm. of yeast. And, um, and and I too was always intimidated by yeast. I made a lot of quick breads, um, you know, like a banana nut or zucchini bread, poppy seed bread, whatever, uh, pumpkin bread, but not a lot of yeast breads. And then I had someone just, I said, okay, I want to learn. And when I went to their house, instead of having me watch them do it, they, they said, do you do this. Uh -huh. Now you do that. I was like, me? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I've been making it ever since. So you can do it. Yeah, on a previous show, uh, uh, someone did uh, Irish uh, soda bread. Well, that was easy. That was with soda. Yeah, that's the point. It's not a yeast. Yeah. Not yeast driven. Yeah. But or is going to have me do hala if we can figure out how to do the logistics because it takes longer than these shows would normally be. I mean, I think we just have to make, you know, again, like three batches. So one of them is just like, here's how you do it. And then here's if then we pull out the one that was like, if you waited an hour. And set that aside, and here's the one if you waited an hour again to bake it. I think we should do it. So I cooked with Christy doing the hala and a few other people, and it was so much fun. And we literally, it was a whole Sunday or Saturday day that we started. We worked together getting the dough, and we came back together after the first rise. And we, every step of the way we were together um, and it was so much fun and it was so much easier having someone guide you through it. And, and I, I think for those who are, can commit that much time, it's not like we were together, you know, the whole six or eight hours that it took. It was just that. It doesn't take six hours. Well, when you, when you start doing the process of, you know, bringing all of it together, you know, even but before. I mean, it does need to sit around and rise. Right. But I mean, just, anyway, 
It'll be three and a half, four hours for sure. Yeah. All right. Um, so we'll talk about doing Hala in a future cooking show. Is there anything now we want to wrap up about this one? Um, no. Uh, that's I made my plate. I or I have a suggestion. Or in Lulu. Uh, so one time I was at a uh, restaurant in San Francisco that um, I think it, at the, it's called Four Noise Oven, and they had these little uh, potato. Um, I don't know what you call it. Tiny little cups are like smaller than a cupcake, like the size of an egg eggshell. And they, they topped them with a little caviar and it was really, really good. And you can, of course, you can get the real caviar if you have a lot of money, which I don't, but you could get some lump fish caviar or something. Yep. It has yep. that salty, sweet taste, which is reminiscent of, of salmon and other, yep. other things that go well. So that's just a little suggestion for you out there oh that sounds great yeah i used to do that i mean so unless you've spent your whole life eating expensive caviar i put a little bit too much yogurt on no. it i think but <laughs> like i have one that's savory as uh, savory with the yogurt and then one that's sweet with the apple brown sugar so nice anyway so you should have been the inside of the pan. There is quite a bit of liquid left, but I pulled off all the potato. So oh, here's here, here's the one I made with the liquid. I just I just dumped it in. For an application like this, or do you ever strain your yogurt first? Well, usually I just drink the yogurt. I just make a more of a liquid yogurt. Like kefir. I just basically make a gallon of it and then I have it for breakfast every morning. So. so that was my last batch. I always right. keep flour in the jar. So in case you need it just for thickening something or adding that way you don't have to pull out a huge amount of flour. I, I think I probably should have fall. I'm like pretty hot right now. I probably should have followed that. Um, tradition of drinking some wine between eating each one, right? I agree. <laughs> so, let me, uh, let me, so, all right, Lulu, is there any final tidbits you want to? Yeah, I was going to plate one up the way I would normally do it. All right. I'm gonna Maria, I'm gonna plate awesome. it up like I normally do it, which is right into my mouth. So sorry. <laughs> Alrighty. So normally I would do this um, right away as it came off, but I like a little more butter on it. And I always fold them in half like a taco and ate them that way. <laughs> and then here I'm gonna cheat. Cheat a little bit. And then, and then and your sour cream. Oh, no. Sour cream. Um, I, I personally don't like want the sour cream on it. This is how I learned to eat it. And uh, bon appetit. Bon appetito. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, my mouth's full. I can't. One second. <laughs> So some of the changes you can do is you can drain, you can even um, um, rinse the potatoes, but I have tried it every which way and I like the creaminess of it and the real potato -y flavor when you leave the moisture in there. So thank you for joining me. Thank um, you. Bravo. <laughs> oh, great job. Yeah. And now we have a whole oven full. Wow. Uh, See, I don't have a whole oven full because I ate about half of them while I was cooking. I have an, a whole <laughs> oven full, too. All right. I'll be over at your house in, like, what, <laughs> three days of driving? <laughs> I'm... So thank you very much, everybody.
and we'll see you again next week as we cook something else. I'm wrapping up the recording. Do you want to make a comment on